Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and talk about some of the fun things that we found going on in the world of Linux open source. Uh, floss, penguins, red Linux shirts. Mm -hmm. Jill, what's going on? <laughs> oh, boy. So last Saturday, me, Steve, has been Mr. Alert, Strider, Wintercell, and Nicole Linux Chicks had another Linux Gamecast party. Yay! But this time it was at Mr. Alert's house celebrating his 30th birthday, and that was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great time and played uh, actually played Rocket League in IRL and online. <laughs> and, and we also played a few Jackbox games, including Faking It which uh, can only be played in Meat Space, and we've never been able to play that in the Friday Night Foo Bar. So that was actually a lot of fun. So after LGC was over, we had some fun with Jackbox games. <laughs> What's to do with you, Pedro? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, well, uh, I'm still here as much as I want to move. It seems like the um, real estate agents and landlords over here aren't in yet. They're not aching for cash because I've been sending emails. It's like, okay, I want to see this place. I really like this place. I want to see it. I have money. Just let me see it. And nothing. I hear nothing back. That's oh. what the heck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please take my money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a question for both of you. Okay. Okay. What is worse? Dot, dot, dot. Okay. I, I went walking outside the neighborhood, and I normally don't look up when I go jogging. But mm -hmm. they were running cables last week, and to which one of the guys replied, It's not fiber. It's like, fine, fine, grr. And I <laughs> went away. <laughs> walking around looking up, there, there's loops on poles. Mm-hmm. That's fiber. Yeah. Yeah, it's fiber. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so they were messing with you. Okay. <laughs> and I can see from my front porch, I can see one of the loops. <laughs> so I, I want to ask you this. What is genuinely worse? Like living somewhere where you know it's not an opportunity, it's not an option, or knowing that it's just hanging in front of you and it's not lit up yet. Oh. And no time frame. Just yeah, uh, say uh, living in a place where you can see it and just not to have it and it's definitely be, worse hard mode i'm dealing with at&t so it very well could never get activated they'd be like eh. <laughs> 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 <sighs> no i don't know farewell farewell to my fiber dreams maybe they'll come but another thing we can bid farewell to application menus Oh, yes. oh yes, because the gnomes, they did something. Jill, tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, they, <laughs> they're they moving their um, application menus to a more central menu. And... Uh, <laughs> 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 it's it's one of my complaints about about Gnome is they they had several different locations for menus, including a hamburger mm -hmm. menu, and so they're mu moving them out of applications and and, and into a, a central uh, menu system, which kind of makes sense. It's like OS ten, <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> the, the weird thing What's here is <laughs> all right check it out man it's known they're changing stuff up yeah um, <laughs> this is one of the reasons why i don't use gnome <laughs> okay check it out i'm not even remotely shocked about this this is under this is like this is gnome like behavior we're going to do something mm -hmm. developers are going to mm -hmm. jump on it hey don't worry i know you're at home you're thinking you're but poo poo all over gnome i'm gonna get no men i'm gonna get kde in and then i'm gonna do xfce so stay tuned i'm gonna get everyone angry at me before the end of this um but yeah the global menu actually made sense in osx i mean it was annoying but at least i could kind of see the work with that and unity kind of did a thing r.i.p unity mm -hmm. even though it's still around this yeah that mm -hmm. menu never really genuinely made a whole lot of sense to me and if we're going to be killing stuff on the gnome project can we get rid of the hamburger menu? Because to me, that doesn't make yeah. sense on a desktop. <laughs> Definitely makes sense on touch, Pedro. Yeah, it's uh, it, it doesn't really make sense. And their explanation of where they're going to end up doesn't really make sense either. Because, oh, they're, they won't show up in the title bar. They'll show up mm -hmm. uh, inside the application window. 
okay it's like they used to you used to have the menu bar below the title bar inside what is technically the application window is that where they're going back to or are you just moving the <laughs> buttons down well they say they're planning on removing application <laughs> menus in gnome um in time for the next release <laughs> so 332 the application menu will no longer be shown in the top bar neither the menu application name and the icon will be shown each gnome application will move the items from a app menu to a menu inside the application Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so they're just going back to the old uh, menu bar style system? Yeah. Yeah. That was so annoying in G-Edit when you'd have that extra menu up there. I, I, I hated that. I don't know. <laughs> and, and no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Mike G in uh, chat also said, uh, <laughs> you know, some apps used it. Many did not. Keeps me from searching and uh, needlessly. And I agree with, with Mike G. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Too many it's, menus. Uh, <laughs> they, they try to make everyone bend to their will and no, you will put the menus here. And developers said, no, we will put the menu wherever we want. Yeah. <laughs> so this is known basically saying, fine, do whatever you want. Hey, then you get a lot of developers <laughs> like, I, I went through the effort to do this and now it's going away. It's not a particularly fun situation, but it, mm -hmm. it doesn't really break anything. It's a minor annoyance one way or the other. So, mm. hey, they'll get it sorted out. Um, let's talk about KDE now. We, we can say yeah. some happy, fun <laughs> things about them because they Yay! just celebrated their 22nd birthday with some. <laughs> and we're going to talk about inspiring facts from its glorious past, question mark. <laughs> it's a, a little post from It's Foss that uh, gathers some of the interesting and inspiring facts, so they claim, about KD. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, yeah. In 1997, 15 developers met and they released what would then be known as KD1. And uh, from there, uh, they Kandolf. finally... I remember Kandolf. <laughs> they finally uh, made QT available as free software. Uh, then the first actual stable version came out. The uh, They got... They did a bunch of different things, and they got a bunch of initiatives together, like... Um, uh, the QT event in India, the KDE Women uh, Initiative, they did a bunch of stuff. Uh, in 2016, they released, uh, they got together with Slimbook, the Spanish uh, laptop uh, manufacturer, I guess. They mm -hmm. count as a manufacturer. Uh, and mm -hmm. they released the, the uh, KDE Slimbook, which the first offering was not very good. You may look up that review on LinuxGameCast.com at some point. And of course, nowadays you have KDE version 5, which um, is one of the things that's actually missing from this timeline, is that when they released um, KDE 4.0, it was a broken, broken mess. <laughs> oh, yes. And now, uh, 14 <laughs> releases into KDE 5, it's still a broken, broken mess. It's how? How with 22 years of development behind you, how do you keep messing this up? Oh. Some people really like KDE. I mean, you use yeah. it, so you're hating on. I I like. I want to like it. That's the thing. It g gives you so much uh, in terms of customization and actually controlling where windows show and how they behave and how they look. That is really awesome, and more distros should do that. Unfortunately, they don't. And KDE is really the one desktop environment that lets you do that, and that really, really takes me off. Mm. What are your mm. thoughts on this, Jill? Oh, well, this article was really a lot of fun. Most of it was all the stuff that I've known over the years, but it's really interesting. Um, uh, Matthias Etrich, KDE's creator, was not quite happy with the look and feel of CDE, or the common desktop environment. So KDE is actually a pun on CDE. And um, I don't think a lot of people even know about that, but I actually loved CDE. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one thing that was really cool uh, um, that KDE um, did in December 2014, they brought the popular educational software Gcompress over to the KDE incubator project. And that was kind of a first of its kind for a window manager to have an incubator and um, um, besides GNOME to have have, soft, have a separate incubator for software. So that was really cool. And I actually, I first enjoyed KDE as the default desktop for the Nompix Linux Live CD. 
So that <laughs> was really cool. And it was stable back then. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, version so, 14 of the um, yes. KDE 4 release was actually really good. That yeah, was the was best really KDE has ever uh, been at. Nowadays, Definitely. it's why fix yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, yeah, another really important thing about KDE is all the software it has brought to us. And mm -hmm. uh, some of my favorite apps are Kden Live, Krita, K3B, and Qt Parted. I always love that utility. And I actually, unlike a lot of people, like the file manager and web browser Conquer. I mm -hmm. thought it was a very, very unique and approach to file management and web browsing. And I actually started really enjoying it, and it's kind of sad it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, and most importantly, actually, from the Conqueror web browser, we have WebKit. So mm -hmm. that's uh, you know that's where WebKit came from. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. Conqueror back in its day was definitely a fun thing that I enjoyed, and this was back when you had a file manager that could also kind of sort of browse websites. Yeah. That mm -hmm. was very rare, and it did its job yeah. really well. And mm -hmm. looking at what Katie is now, and I realize that old man yells at, you know, uh, desktop manager. I understand that 100%. Uh, it's kind of hard to believe that the origins were, let's make a better version of CDE. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, I, I could take let's say XFCE and take it back in time and like, hey, this is a better version of CDE and be like, yeah, it kind of is. Or if we took a modern version of KDE and be like, what the expletive delete mm. is this? Um, and why does everything keep crashing? That, that's because you're not running it on Arch, Pedro. You should know better. <laughs> uh, I definitely remember downloading KDE back at uni. This is a long time ago, kids, in the 90s. And like going through the elaborate, elaborate process of getting permission to use the SCSI CD-ROM burner. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. this, this was a big thing. And you had like a one yeah. in five chance of it burning correctly. But yeah. uh, that was really fun. I also remember uh, for going back like the argument about using the QT widget set and basing yes. on that weekly arguments on slash dot. And I was like, this is why GNOME is better because it's GTK and <laughs> QT is not free. Things have changed. Um, I used to peek in with KDE. I think everything up until like 0. 0.4. 0. 0.4 was, well, 4.0. That was rough. Mm -hmm. That was rough. Um, yeah, <laughs> they, they, they've managed to survive through it, though. And I mean, it's great to have these projects, you know, Gnome, Kitty and everything else. They're they're monolithic and a lot of good softwares come from Kitty, like uh, Kitty and live. We use that for the show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And nothing like a big project to paint a big target on when it comes time to poo poo on bad decisions <laughs> yeah uh, don't worry man i mean uh, some people they're weird i mean they'll, they'll latch on to, I, I use whatever works best for me um that actually for me is xfc and they've mm -hmm. released screensaver not point mm -hmm. one point zero that's right uh because screensavers we we still need that it's a port of meat screensaver itself a port of gnome screensaver which has been mm -hmm. tightly integrated with xfc desktop utilizing libraries and xconfig configuration backend and all right it's like screensaver it, yeah it, 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 it's a screensaver uh, it, it's literally the old x screensaver made to work with the with current versions of <laughs> yeah. um F xfc that's it. <laughs> but but it's XFCE. I get, it's good. But no, it's not. I mean, it, it's a screensaver, man. I, I yeah. don't know. It's, it's got a lock screen, but what, what, what's the big deal here? Uh, for me, looking at this, I'm like, this is neat. Okay, if you've been looking for this lock screen, I don't know. But it's kind of useless. Because, you know, your modern monitor, like ones made in the last decade, they're not going to suffer from burn-in unless you really try to do it. I mean, like, mm -hmm. you got to be intentional. And uh, why don't you just set your monitors to power off instead of using a screensaver? Because it saves power and you don't hate the environment so much. Yeah, and it's yeah. If the point here, because <laughs> I, as uh, they say in the article, it's 
oh yeah it's uh it's all about simplicity yeah no uh if the point here is simplicity why not mm -hmm. go the way that cinnamon did which is literally yes. they take the wallpaper that you have they mute the colors they darken it a little bit and they put the clock on it that's it that's all they do <laughs> And it works. Yeah. I don't know. It's always a little weird when I see XFC trying to do something pretty. And I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, I know. I like ugly Aww. stuff. Come on. I mean, Pedro. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we've all seen your desktop. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That wonderful High functional contrast. desktop. <laughs> cool. That's the... Yeah. Um, what are you looking forward to using the screensaver, Jill? Are you well, excited? I well, the thing is, 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 is it would be nice. I mean, X Screen Saver is a little janky, the application. So, so it, it, it will be nice to have proper integration with XFCE4, the XFCE libraries, and XF can conf configuration backend. So that's actually mm -hmm. really, really nice that it's, it'll be integrated. Like you can get it for GNOME and, and uh, Mate. So, um, but I also do completely agree with Pedro. The Cinnamon imp implementation of a screensaver is really one of the most elegant of any window manager, and it is my favorite. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's out. It's available now. Go play with it if it's your thing or just set your monitors yeah. to power off. Oh, look at yeah, that. just do that. Yeah. <laughs> it cuts down on heat. That is like one thing I noticed is... You know, once you have a monitor, maybe you have dual screens, you don't notice it. But if you have five in front of you, <laughs> monitors put out a lot of heat. You don't pay that any attention until you have a couple around you. And you realize when you power it down, it lowers the temperature in the room. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Plex, it's the thing. You know it. You use it to stream your legally purchased shows um, mm -hmm. throughout your house and to remote areas. And it has now arrived in Canonical's Snap store yeah it's a hot new thing but mm -hmm. mm, you can currently <laughs> install it on your machine it's thing you know what plex is uh put it on it scans your media audio video it can also work as like a tv guide and a bunch of functionality that i don't even know about mm -hmm. but the news here is you can head over to what is it snapcraft yep the snap yep. store and instead of use you know and putting in the ppa and doing app get install plex and it's just <laughs> working you can do it this way which i did which i did and mm. uh they do make a point uh in this little article it says uh adopting the universal linux app packaging format snap and technically true is the best kind of true 100 percent on that <laughs> But I should mention that you can get a 30-day trial of Plex Pass uh, oh. <laughs> using all caps Plex Pass dash snap. It's in the article. I don't know. That's not a commercial. And you're going to know that's not a commercial in just a second. Because um, <laughs> then I signed Jack. I, I installed this. I wanted to dog food it. I didn't have Plex on the uh our production box. So I was like, I'd put it in take it off. Let's see how the snap thing works, which I've used before. And I just did it from the command line because Snapcraft, easy enough. It's like, oh, just copy pasta, put it in terminal. It did its thing. And I went to the local host. And I was like, okay. What I knew about, and I've mentioned on this show, was something I considered hmm, a little bit scratchy back in the day was when you first set up Plex, it would give you a screen and it'd be like, log in with your Plex thing or create an account. But if you looked in like, I think it was the upper mm. right hand corner in a slightly marginally <laughs> different yes. shade of gray in mice type, it had a skip button that I had to Google. I'm like, how do I, I don't know. I just need to access. And I was like, oh, there it is. Click. Then you could just do what you would normally do with Plex because you know, I don't need an account for my local stuff. This one Ooh, we um let, let me just show uh, the video version mm -hmm. this is what you're going to see right here um this is the actual install you get plex continue with the google continue with the facebook continue with email no mention of skip none yeah in the bottom <laughs> right hand corner granted no longer in gray it says what is this question mark <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> this is what this is now it takes you to this screen that 
clearly tells you if if you skip this, you will not be secure in all caps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh <laughs> Hashtag booga booga and all that. <laughs> it it really gives you the rundown with a sign in, followed by there's your skip and accept limited, limited functionality. Wow. <laughs> Plus, <laughs> that is sketchy. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, listen, man, I bought want, Plex they want apps. The money. <laughs> I, I've given them the money. Yeah. I've already purchased that from my Android devices. And I'm fine with that. That skip thing. I'm like, that's ah, a little bit sketchy, but I got to get where you're coming from. But, you know, hit me with the sales pitch and all that. That's fine. But it's like, you're not going to be secure. No, 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 no. I, I mean, just just give me the option. Be like, hey, we'd like you to sign up. We got a bunch of cool stuff because, yeah. you know, your basic install for your local network, 99% of that functionality, the average user is not going to need anything included in the Plex Pass. And you know that. Or you yeah. wouldn't have made it such this. That's not cool. <laughs> and it's uh, marketing and politics, like base level stuff to know yeah. that if you're trying to promote something, you make uh, what you're trying to sell look better. You don't make whatever your uh, other option is look worse because that doesn't make you look good. In fact, people are just going to point out, yeah, no, that looks shady because it is. You're literally throwing shade at your own product and saying that you deliberately made something that is shady because you would like people to pay for the not so shady version. That's pretty bad. <laughs> you don't even have to pay for it. It's just like the creating the account for the. That's fine. I'm 100% behind that. But don't, you know, hide the. Oh, by the way, if you click this button, then if you click, then you can just access all the stuff that you want for your local. And I don't know how it works anymore because now mm. I bought the um, players for Android on mm -hmm. a couple accounts a while back. And now that's not even a thing. I think they go for like a subscription service or I'm not 100% because when I download it now and I wipe out an Android device, I have to download it. Then I have to reauthorize it instead of mm. uh, or it used to just download and have like a key that would attach to it anyway. That I, I was sad to see that. I, I like Plex. Aww. I think it's good software. Um, m maybe <laughs> dial that back a little bit or not. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not your boss. <laughs> Let's talk about OpenID. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of uh, logging in with other accounts, uh, someone wrote a, an article about the decline of OpenID. And if you're wondering what is OpenID, well, it's that little menu that you see whenever you go to create an account for any website nowadays, which lets you sign in with Google, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, email with your phone, with whatever other service allows OAuth 1 or OAuth 2, basically. So um, the uh, writer of the article uh, is also a developer in another uh, OpenID style thing, uh, which he calls Simple ID. And uh, he said that uh, the last update that he made for Simple ID was in December 2016. You only have yourself to blame for that one. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, most of the services that supported uh, his uh, implementation of Simple ID uh, have discontinued it. And most of the... Um, websites like Stack Exchange, and uh, he mm. brings up Stack Exchange a lot, uh, that used OpenID have been phasing out uh, the support for those OpenID accounts. And in a way, I can see why, because um, stuff like the Facebook leak and Google Plus shutting down, it, when the services are either springing leaks left and right or they're just going the way of the dodo, you really don't have much of a reason to keep um, OpenID around. But at the same time, the convenience that it affords you, and I've used it quite a lot, it's like, oh, I can sign it with my Google account? Okay, I have two-factor authentication on that. If something goes really wrong, I'll at least have that bit of hope so yeah it's it's sad to see but at the same time it's inevitable <laughs> yeah um i actually you know when thinking about this i was you know it, with all the discussions recently of a decentralized internet being the future it seems mm -hmm. that this open source technology should be increasing or maybe it will 
will make a comeback at a future time, you would think uh, I'm, I'm really surprised that this is uh, not going to not going to be used much anymore. Uh, but maybe in the future. <laughs> It's really yeah. a thing. So uh, a, it, it had a push behind it a while yeah. back. You know, if you rewind you know, three or four years ago, you would, you could still run into it occasionally and be like, hey, mm -hmm. open idea. I had an open idea account because I'm always like, hey, yes, a good open standard. I like this idea. But when I, when I go to a new site, I never use those buttons. I mean, I don't have a Facebook mm. account, but I have a G plus RIP G plus um, Twitter and stuff like that. No, 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 no. What I do is I create an account yeah. with a, mm -hmm. I have an email address that is basically four accounts like that, create a password and deal with it that way. I don't know. How, how about you? Do you log in with Facebook all the time, Pedro? <laughs> no, uh, like I said, no. uh, if I log in with anything else, just because it's a site that's at least reputable, I will sign in with Google because it saves me from having to type down mm -hmm. that email address. But uh, outside of that, yeah, I usually just use that throwaway email that I have that mm -hmm. gets like about 5,000 spam emails a day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do a I do the same. I always have a separate login and password yeah. for all the different accounts because I, I don't like using social networking to integrate all the things. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we got to get tied in. Come on, yeah. get, get with the future. Um, yeah, so yeah. Just use Facebook for everything. Some people do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Zuckerberg, <laughs> salute you, soldier. Um, GDP Pocket Two. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah. the GPD Pocket 2 uh, came out not too long ago without a Linux version. And people were like, oh, but can you install Linux even if you buy the Windows version? And they were saying, yes, but it, uh, some of the things don't really work. And of course, Martin Wimpress, uh, not content mm -hmm. with just letting something be, decided, you know what, I'm going to get me a uh, GPD Pocket 2 and I'm going to make it work. And as he said on Twitter, it was a mm -hmm. really simple fix. Uh, <laughs> He created a TD Tiny Little GitHub repo just mm -hmm. to host a script. And basically what it does is you install um, Ubuntu or Ubuntu Mate and you run the script with sudo. And if you pass the enable flag, it will enable the screen rotation. It will enable the touch screen. It will enable just about everything that isn't working out of the box will magically work. And it, mm -hmm. it is a really simple script. If you have a look at it, it it's actually tiny so why didn't the developers do this do that yeah yeah <laughs> i don't yeah, know something I mean, so it, simple <laughs> it is simple he fixed it i mean it's one of those things that you're just like really okay yeah well hey look there, there's a solution to your like really problem you don't even have to mess with it i haven't uh played with the two i got to play with one for a hot second and yeah <laughs> That's neat. They're actually, it's uh, one of the few times that I've seen uh, like an Indiegogo project kickstart, especially when you're talking about hardware mm -hmm. come to fruition and it's good. Mm -hmm. It yep. is genuinely a solid piece of kit. Um, that's something that became a thing, a small thing. But we're going to talk about something that never really became a thing, but it's still getting updated, Jill. It's still getting <laughs> updated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Now, this is awesome. In um, August, UB Ports released Ubuntu Touch OTA version 4 with Ubuntu 16.04, but it had to be manually updated. And now many bugs have been fixed, and the OTA 5 release with Ubuntu 16.04 is available with an automatic update. Yay! And I still have to do this on my OnePlus One phone. I'm looking forward to this. Um, and this, what's cool about this release is this is the start of a regular bi-monthly release cycle of updates. And so, yeah, I check their release cycles every other month. So that's really, really cool. And one of the new features is it includes the new Morph browser based on Qt Web Engine and a more recent Chromium Engine base, which is, which is really, really awesome. Um, it's a lot less buggy and faster than the old uh, web browser which can make or break an operating system, as we know. And what's also neat is that it uses Qt automatic scaling, which allows the browser to adjust to any screen size and scales web pages properly, whether you're using a phone or a tablet. And that's really awesome. And, it, and that's what it needed, a good web browser. <laughs> that was one of the important things. <laughs> 
So looking forward to testing it out. <laughs> yeah, personally, <laughs> I'm looking forward to when this project becomes viable. I might even buy like a, um, I don't know, mm -hmm. secondhand uh, Nexus 5 and throw it yes. on it. It's like, there we go. The, yeah. See what it <laughs> goes like. I, I, I'm totally down for that. It just needs to be in a working state. I need to be able to make and receive phone calls with it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Yeah, whatever. Both of you are monsters. I'll stick with sales for the last. Right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, quick mention. I'm learning a lot about digital mixing and all that fun stuff. And I ran across, it's like, I need this plugin, this plugin, this plugin. And calf-studio-gear.org was like, yo, we got all that and more. It's easy to install. And what is this? I know this is nothing new, but hey, I'm learning and I wanted to share the learning with you. It's a gang of plugins that are available exclusively for Linux and the operating system. Uh, it runs standalone effect rack connectables. You can do it through Jack Sound server plugins. Um, LV2 compliant, so you can throw them in Audor with Live Mixer. That's what mm -hmm. I'm doing. I mean, you get your reverb, compressors, gates, synths, all that and the like. Wicked easy to build from source and uh, no real issues with that. And also you got a little typo on your web zone. Comply, complaint, complaint, <laughs> complaint, <laughs> complaint. <laughs> it's just a gang of good stuff. 30 band EQs, um, distortion effects, any, anything you can think of uh, is in here. The only downside I can find is like all the menus have the... Uh, what do you call it? Material? Does it like where it tries to look like the device that it's being a digital representation of where it's got the dials and stuff like that, as opposed to just like a regular slider. That's oh, the, oh, okay. Yeah. I can't think of the uh, word yeah. right now. It'll come to me like next Tuesday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> go check it out and use it. If you are getting into digital mixing, you probably already know if you are, but I learned about it and I'm like, Hey thing, go check it out. Uh, what do we have up next? Mm. Tuna up next. Yeah. We have a little bit of a, it's not tuna. It's Tutanota, which <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is, uh, uh, an encrypted mail application that mm -hmm. you can download from F droid. What's F droid. It's that store that people who have a completely irrational, uh, hatred for Google, uh, like to use on their Android phones, because even though they have that completely irrational hatred, they would still very much like to use Android over any of the so-called alternatives. Uh, and yeah, mm -hmm. no, Tutanata is exactly what it's says it's uh, a encrypted mail application it uh, supports everything that you'd expect it to support uh, and the big thing here is you don't need to build it yourself it's a very simple just download F-Droid install it from F-Droid done you have your uh, privacy minded email client good to go it's it's a thing <laughs> yeah Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is this is this is actually actually really really cool. It's it's a very easy to use encrypted email client without having to install OpenPGP, PGP, or GPGG. <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> or GPG, <laughs> or or paying for an expensive encryption email service. So that's what's unique about this. It's just just it it works out of the box already with all the encryption. You don't have to install anything. And there are some others that I have tried, which is Proton Mail. Uh, that one's been pretty cool. And Counter Mail are nice encrypted email alternatives, also, but they are not available on FDroid. So that's what makes no. uh, uh, Tutonota unique. Tuna. That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> and Pedro, to, to your thing, man, you can use FDroid in the Play Store together. One of the reasons I use FDroid is to install Addaway. Mm hmm. <laughs> which is there, and more yeah. often than not, I find the builds of VLC are more recent and up-to-date than those I find in the Play Store. Yes. Um, yeah. When it comes to encrypted <laughs> stuff, uh, this is great. Ease of use, and there's an app for that, which mm -hmm. is good. Uh, the problem is, is getting anyone yeah. else to use it. Uh, if you've ever done PGP, and it's like, here's my key, it followed by a blank stare and like, ah, I'm not doing that. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but I yeah. thought I'd at least try to get you to. Mm. And um, <laughs> anyway, 
So, Jill, we're old. Uh, we're old, yes. but so is IRC. <laughs> yes. IRC is 30 years old now, our, our, our beloved internet, internet relay chat, which I am running right now. And... Um, and uh, there, there's, there's uh, so many ways. Uh, it really has changed our lives. And, and for me, it actually did. Um, I first used IRC on BBSs before the web. We, were, we would test it on the, the BBSs for our own in-house communication. And we used it to communicate and share the wares <laughs> <laughs> on the uh, elite BBSs. <laughs> that was a thing. And then for me, I hadn't used it for years, but then I found a little podcast called Linux Gamecast and started using it again. And yeah, it has changed my life. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for IRC. I wouldn't be doing this podcast. So. You hear that, IRC? It's on you. You're full. Um, my knowledge of IRC basically boils down to where it was 30 years ago. I was like... Mm -hmm. I know how to get into a room. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, how it works is basically magic and bullheaded refusal to use anything else, uh, like macOS. But uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, I remember the first time I used IRC, like I'm assuming most everyone around the... Uh, early 30s, late 20s, was I was in school and the computers at school had uh, Microsoft's IRC client installed, Merck. Ah, so, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the relevant XKCD right there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, no, it, that was my first experience and I'm like, oh, okay, that's a thing. And I never really used it anymore until... Around 2004, 2005, when I started using Linux, it's like, oh, there's an IRC channel for that. Mm -hmm. They're Yay. still using IRC? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how people communicate, man. I mean, yeah. it's to the point, uh, we do most of our stuff uh, on Discord, but we have an IRC bridge because, mm -hmm. yep. hey... There's always mm -hmm. going to be that one person. Yes. <laughs> All right. I threw this in here just so Pedro could get it out of his system. Oh, Well, yes. uh, this is a reiteration of last week, because uh, you may remember that Microsoft released those uh, 60,000 patents into the Open Invention Network. And uh, one of the patents that was a point of contention was the MS uh, FAT32 or XFAT license. And I, as I mentioned, uh, Bradley Kun, uh, one of the people that helped Samsung uh, release uh, the source, or at least make it source available, uh, make XFAT source available, um, he posted that, yes, even though that's a very good thing that um, Microsoft released those patents, you still need mm. to be careful because of that particular patent, the one that they've been using to extort money out of Android and some mm. Linux projects, uh, they've actually, uh, that one fits into a weird little loophole where since the code wasn't upstreamed, then it's st that patent is still valid. And it, since it's not included in the ones that Microsoft released, they can still keep suing people or uh getting them to pay the royalties so yeah <laughs> i don't know yeah, how to... go ahead go ahead jill go oh ahead. um i was just gonna say good on the software freedom conservancy for pushing this issue <laughs> i think everyone should be <laughs> so <laughs> is that where your line is pedro when they hey. give when they give on this they're like okay you can have that. See, no, uh, it's exactly what Bradley's saying. It's if uh, they release this and they assure us that, yes, uh, we will not be pursuing royalties or suing anyone for using the XFAT stuff, mm -hmm. uh, then yes. Okay, we got you now. You'll give Microsoft a big old Portuguese would... hug. <laughs> 
A tentative hug, yes. Listen, man, I'm, I, I'm trying to pin you down. I don't want you to turn into like, well, when Game X comes to Linux, I'll switch to Linux. Game X comes to Linux. Oh, well, you know. Um... <laughs> See, I have to use Windows for work, and uh-huh. I know just how terrible that is. So that's still going to be a uh, heck of a uh, barrier to overcome. But I will give Microsoft the benefit of the doubt again if they let us have that. Well, I just want to make sure that we're not in a situation to where I want to encourage positive behavior because it doesn't (laughs) come across as Microsoft's like, okay, non-aggression, 60,000 patents. We're putting it out there. And the first reaction shouldn't be, that's not enough. Screw you, Microsoft. <laughs> I mean, they only had to release that one and people would have I, I, been, I, I, oh, okay. I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, and this is coming from me. You know how much I love Redmond. Um, you know what else I love? The 112 people that are making this show Yay! possible. That's right. Uh, the beautiful party people, as we like to call them, uh, kicking in uh, 251 wet stinky caches per Saturday night train wreck. And with that, we're able to bring you five days of programming ad free because you support independent media and keep us from having to sell mattresses. Um, <laughs> if you like, man, I, I, I'm being dead honest. No Casper ads here. But uh, yeah, no Casper, no uh, meat jerky, no, none of that. Yes. But we get to do a lot of stuff. I mean, I, I got to make a silly little video if you're wondering about uh one of the things uh, google has it's project stream and mm-hmm. i got in on that and i was like hey i'm just going to show everyone how this works with latency and all that and i've got to do a couple of videos about really particular hardware something i pointed out on saturday that maybe you know hopefully somebody else is like this show sucks i can do it better And when they do, they'll be able to find how we've put it together on the hardware side, which is nothing wrong with that. And they won't have to spend, you know, six years digging around user lists, stitching together information and all that fun stuff. Plus, you get the added benefit of Pedro playing Proton games on Tuesday because that's what he does now. Apparently. (laughs) I might do a non-Proton game at some point. (laughs) We do this show on Wednesdays, Thursdays. Jordan has his own idea of what he calls a stream. Friday, I bring in Trivia Games Night. And Saturday, we have the big show, the thing that started it all. Again, Mm -hmm. no mattress ads. None whatsoever. So if you get a little bit of value out of our horse and pony show, man, uh, become a patron. It'd be awesome. It's kind of like buying us a cup of coffee. And each week, it supports our nonsense. And we want to thank everyone who is there currently in Discord. I'm going to pop over and say, hey, everyone, Yay! look at them. They're so Hello. beautiful. <laughs> that, that's one of the we uh, love you. things we like to throw back in your direction because we like to, you know, value for value and all that fun stuff. So thanks for making this possible. Now, let's get into mm-hmm. a delicious, poorly drawn, one might even <laughs> make you a <story. laughs> <laughs> pumpkin, pumpkin spice slice of pie. Uh, that is both accurate and highly disturbing. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, this first one comes from the 314 Reactor, which is, uh, well, it's a teeny tiny little project about building a teeny tiny little portable pocket computer with a Raspberry Pi Zero. So uh, the, yeah, the builder goes through the process. Uh, there's a Raspberry Pi Zero. There's a couple of boards there. There's a touch fat that's just wrong uh <laughs> there's a teeny tiny little battery is that a nokia battery it looks like one of those old nokia phone batteries <laughs> uh it's uh yeah it's got a teeny tiny little touch screen as well it's bare bones as it comes and its use is as the developer says very niche you need to basically this is one of those projects that i have to ask why? Because even the developer, uh, the builder Pedro, is going. Pedro, you're not allowed to ask that with Raspberry Pi projects. <laughs> <laughs> even, even the creator was like, "Okay, uh, I can see that this is not going to appeal to a lot of people because I basically had to create my own use case for this." But it's good to have uh, something uh, that if you find yourself in that very specific situation that you absolutely need a teeny tiny computer that you could just pull out of your pocket and get a GPD Pocket 2 instead. Or if you can afford that, you can try to build this one. <laughs> I don't know why you're hating on this. You're not really hating on 
<laughs> I'm not hating on it. I'm just going, okay, we've seen a lot of really neat projects. This one doesn't even have that. You try listen, to get this listen, through listen, TSA let, let, at the let, airport, let, let, it's right. going to get confiscated. Okay, no TSA <laughs> acceptance factor on this. But this no. is a good example of somebody <laughs> sitting around their house and being able to go, I bet I could build something. Mm-hmm. Guess. Which you've never done that. You've ended up with like an amalgam of like, I can put this thing here and this. I can look, I made something of questionable <laughs> use, but I made it and it's neat. Pedro, well, what I'm trying, what I'm trying to say, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> what I'm trying to communicate is Pedro, in fact, hates creators. No, I don't hate creators. I just I want to see a use case, even if it's a niche one. I want to see it. This one you have to create it, it for right. yourself. Let, let me tell you. I'm going to tell you the use case. This is killing an afternoon. <laughs> yeah, because you can. <laughs> okay, so it's just because you can. Okay, mm-hmm. all yeah. Right. <laughs> I'll concede to them because you can. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Frito pies. Hi. Yay, Frida Pie. Well, this is actually really awesome. This is Libra Computers. $10 La Frida board offers a cheap alternative and better specs to the Raspberry Pi A+, and is available now to purchase on Kickstarter. It's it's really, really cool, and it's, it's less than half the price of a Raspberry Pi. And um, what's, what's the specs are actually pretty impressive uh, for a little thing. Um, it's running an S8... Zero 5X system on a, on a chip that features a quad-core ARM Cortex A53 at 1.2 gigahertz and an ARM Mali 450 GPU cores. And it, it comes at $10, you get 512 megs of RAM, or at $15, you get 1 gig of RAM. Mm-hmm. And But the difference is, uh, and, and where they cut cost, is there is no Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support. <laughs> so that's, yeah. that's obviously where they've cut costs. But it's it's really nice to have a competitor in this space, and it's even cheaper. So why not? Uh, and it's it's the you know banana pies were already a thing. And yeah, the and the O droids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. your budget pie. I mean, it really boils yeah. down to like two things. You know? <laughs> there is like the legitimate. I always buy like the one from Raspberry Pi themselves mm-hmm. because yeah. if it wasn't for them pushing this out. Probably exactly. wouldn't be such a big thing. After yeah. I paid, after I paid my due to that, then it's open season on the knockoffs and the cheap ones to play around yeah. with. Um, <laughs> Definitely. But then Same again, here. <laughs> you have to consider. Okay, so ten for the five twelve version with the quad core and whatever else. But you're going to end up with a device that can do 1080p video. Yeah. Yes, but you can also for ten get the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Which comes mm-hmm. with the Wi-Fi's and the Bluetooths and HDMI that stuff. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Full size HDMI. <laughs> Full size. size. <laughs> Big um, I don't know. I say the more the merrier. One of the advantages yeah. that you can't undercut Raspberry Pi on is the availability of software. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but so. this this is compatible with all the the Pi the the Raspbian and and all the different distros. Mm-hmm. So it is. That's the, usually a is, good yeah a good yeah. Uh, selling point. It's like yeah we're a knockoff yeah. but we're compatible. <laughs> well, I yeah. mean, it, like Truggy points out, stick to British manufacturing. It's like, <laughs> just never say the words British engineering around my mom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> unless you have like thirty minutes to kill, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this week's <laughs> weekly daily Wednesdays. Before we get out of here, we like it if uh, you want to talk to us. We find it strange. It perplexes us. Like, really? People listen to this? And um, Every now and then, yeah. Every now and then. <laughs> it's bizarre. But if you want to do that, Pedro, they can just go to our contact. No, they, they can just randomly yell out of their front door, and that's how we'll get in touch with them, right? If they mm-hmm. live close by, yes. But chances are, if you're listening to this through the interwebs, you don't live close by. So go on over to LyricsGameCast.com. You already have that internet connection after all. Uh, fill out the form. Make sure to pick LWDW from the little choosy box. And uh, maybe Google will ask you to pick all of the... Um, Traffic lights still, off of the thing. I got that one today. Not a robot. <laughs> However, um, earlier, well, actually, I'm going to say all this week, man. Storefronts. Storefronts and traffic lights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I got the traffic lights ones today. Yeah. <laughs> that's a thing, but that's the best way to get a hold to us. Uh, you can leave us YouTube comments, Pedro said. Easiest way, though. Um, mm-hmm. Just we have a forum for that, that to make sure everyone gets it and we can decide 
the fate. I'm like, will this be on the show or not? Um, or patron. Oh, yes. And coming. Uh, oh, man, I'm going to sneak in a plug real quick. Don't okay. don't tell chill. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we do Doctor Who now. Game of Who is back. <laughs> It's thing. Yes. <laughs> Nine PMs uh, Sunday. Jordan and I break it down, and we open the after show up. Joe was kind enough to show up uh, mm-hmm. last week, and mm-hmm. you can too. Okay, so last bit of shilling done. Mm-hmm. Let's get with the uh, the actual feedback. So Nathan, uh, I said, thought you were uh, going to say jiggy with it, and I was going to hang up on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, because uh, we were no. talking about. Uh, a, arm mounted uh stuff like uh building raspberry pies into uh something that you would wear on your wrist and someone brought up the example of the pip boy and uh nathan goes on the wednesday show you mentioned cramming the pie laptop into lilo's armband or a pip boy 2000 way ahead of you i've been thinking about what the new apple watch can do with health readings with the sensors batteries and computing you can buy for harvest from cell phones and other portables answer be this forget the thinner and lighter than ever before just how much capability can you stuff into captain jack's rift manipulators yes. <laughs> there's your doctor who tie-in <laughs> Yes. Tie-in, yeah. Uh, <laughs> slots and pockets all around, adjustable straps, protective flap. As a computing device, this could be totally pimped out. Yes, that is a very good idea. And uh, as, yeah, everyone around here watches Doctor Who, and none of us remember that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh. <laughs> we have flexible displays. I mean, they're, they're kind of becoming a thing. I mean, they've been a thing for a while, but they'll break if you look at them wrong, much less actually mm-hmm. flex them. Um, what I want is what Leela has. I want something that covers the entirety of my forearm that has yes. a button to pop flat out when I need it to. So I can do my writing and all that, but can also wrap back around and maybe mm-hmm. double as a bludgeoning device. Yep. <laughs> what, what do you think? Uh, although <laughs> I don't want big bulky and clunky, but I was like, you know, I could just put a laptop in a backpack and call a day, you know? <laughs> it's a flail. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying, man. I don't even like carrying around. I do not like laptops. Ever since like tablets came out, I'm like, that's the stupidest thing in the world. And somebody gave me a tablet to play with. And I was like, oh, my God, these are so amazing. They're so light. And I don't have to carry around a laptop. And I can do 99% of what I do on a laptop, which is browse the web. Me, I like laptops. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Joan, portable devices, yeah. what do you want? Oh yeah, I actually I've always myself I've always loved uh, <laughs> Leela's device and yeah, the Captain Jack device. That I had forgotten about that. That is really cool. <laughs> yeah, no, I I really like the idea of the Pip Boy 2000 or even the Bethesda Pip Boy 3000. It's like yeah. armband type of thing with a screen that that's easy enough to do nowadays because, yeah, you could just have the phone for the health monitoring stuff. You pipe that or the uh, smartwatch for that. And then you pipe that to the phone that's acting as the screen and you can have the entire Pip-Boy experience. Yeah. But it, I like the mm-hmm. Captain Jack Rift Manipulator idea. It's, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that could work. I, I like the idea yeah. in the Apple Watch. Uh, Dr. Frog. Frog. Because they make a ladies' version, and I've seen that thing, and I'm like, dude, I would break that if I po- you just pooped it with my <laughs> index finger. Um, I've never, like, not in Meatspace, I don't know anyone with, like, a regular size um, Apple Watch, but I went and looked at Android Wear. Mm-hmm. But by the yeah. time you get to the ones that just don't look like dork food, uh, they're like three, 400 bucks. I'm like, I'm not yeah. spending that on something that is going to be obsolete in two years. Plus, yeah. I don't wear wristwatches. I have... It's, it's I do. <laughs> I still have mm-hmm. this one, and uh, yeah, no, this is a uh, three hundred something euro wristwatch that's not even smart mm-hmm. in any way, no. shape, or form. <laughs> uh, I bump into stuff, man. I, I things get smashed, and uh, oh, no. I've bumped into things. This one has got a nick on it, a pretty big one too. I rip oh. off doorknobs if I hit them. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful people, that's going to do it for the show. We'll be back next week. Uh, tune in, 3 o'clock, if you want to join us live. I want to thank everybody who uh, took the time to show up and watched our little bit of a train wreck. We're just here to have mm-hmm. fun. We're not trying to be like, we're a professional because we're not. And um, come hang out with us next week. Until then, I'm going to click on a button. 
and maybe music's going to come out. Let's see. <laughs> Yay! Uh, here it comes. <laughs> oh yeah! Yay! <laughs> It's the ben, end. Yay, you made Pedro. it. <laughs> I remember to do the credits this week. <laughs> yay, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> We're not one off anymore. Yay. Yay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yay. Thank you to our, our beautiful executive producers and producers for all your love. <laughs> <laughs> I like that we have a Patreon called The Real Pedro Mateos. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, I can't believe it. LWW 140. Wow. Oh, 140. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it just amazes me, man. They're like 140. I was like, you should try to be on this end for 140. <laughs>